All right, this video is going to cover 3.2 uh, of our workbook from page 122 to page 131. And it is uh, uh, entitled Weighted and Trimmed Means and Outliers. Uh, again, a, uh, not a very difficult concept to understand. And uh, again, just another way of calculating means of central or central tendency and uh, calculating statistics. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about um, is what is a trimmed mean. Now, if any of you guys watched the Olympics, and I know that you probably all did, uh, maybe you watched some of the figure skating and you saw the scores from the judges, and there were five judges judging uh, the skating events, and they each gave scores, and sometimes you saw something like maybe 3.7 from one judge, 4.2 from another, uh, 3.8 from another judge, 4.1, and let's say we had a uh, 5.0. Okay, so if we wanted to calculate the mean or the average of the scores, we would just add all these up and we would divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we would have. Uh, a mean of here of something okay but what they did in the Olympics was uh, to make it fair is that they calculated what we called a trimmed mean and that was is that they would take the lowest score and the highest score and they would cancel them out and omit them and they would take the three middle scores. So if we were to look at these three sets of data, we've got 3.7, 4.2, 3.8, 4.1, 5.0. The smallest is 3.7. They would cross that out and the highest number is 5.0 and they'd cross that out. And that was to take away any favoritism, negative or positive, out of the scores. And they would calculate the average of the three that were left over. Okay, so if we were to take the regular mean of these numbers here, we would add them all up, divide by five, we would have a regular mean. A trim mean means that we were to, we would cancel the highest and the lowest, and we would take the middle numbers, in this case 4.2, 3.8, and 4.1, add them together, and we would get a trimmed mean. Okay, now why did they do this? Well, it was to make it uh, more fair and to take the bias, either negative or positive, away from uh, a particular score. So what does that mean for us when we're calculating statistics? Well, supposing we have a set of data. We might have um, some odd numbers out there that might be way, way, way different than, than the uh, normal set of numbers in a set of data. Now, you remember from Chapter 1, we have we learned the uh, term outliers. Now, uh, we were talking about scatter plots. Well, what an outlier is, it's just uh, a data point or, or a piece of data that is way, way uh, different than the other ones. So when we're calculating data, we might have some numbers that are completely different um, and way out there, you know, lying outside the normal set of data points. So let's just take a, a, a set of numbers here. We'll keep them very simple. Four, nine, eight, three, two, 11, oh, let's say eight again. And let's say we've got something like 31. Okay, so here is our set of data, set of numbers in, in a just uh, in a data plot here. And what we first wanna do is we wanna put them in order. Okay, so we'll start with uh, smallest to highest, we'll put them in ascending order. So we have two, then we have three, then we have four, and then the next one is, looks like we've got eight, and then we've got eight again, and then we have nine, then we have 11, and then we've got 31. Now you can see that the numbers um, are fairly close together from two up to 11. Then we've got this point that's just completely out there, 31. So if we were to calculate the mean of this, we would just add them all up, and we would divide by the total number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'd add up all those numbers, divide by eight, and they all add up to the 76, and there's eight of them, so we would divide that by eight, and we have an average or a mean of 
Okay, so that is just the regular average or the regular mean. Because we have an outlier here, which is number 31, it lies kind of completely out of the other numbers. Okay, quite a huge difference. What we want to do is we want to maybe do the same thing as what we did up here, you know, with the Olympic figure skating scores. And we want to eliminate that point, that outlier point 31. Now that lies way out there, but to make it a fair trim means we have to eliminate 31. We have to also eliminate one from the other side. Okay, so if we were going to find what we call a trimmed mean, we would have to eliminate the number 31, and we would also have to eliminate the first number on the other end, which is 2. So what we would do is we would add up the numbers 3 up to 11, 3, 4, 8, 8, 9, and 11, and then find the average for that. And these numbers, 3 plus 4 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 11, add up to 43, and there's 6 of them. So our new trimmed mean has an average of 7 point two approximately rounding to the nearest tenth okay so a regular average would be nine point five if we had included two up to thirty one but because this thirty one is completely off the mark it's an outlier right here an outlier from the uh, other set of data points we don't want to include that because that seems to be kind of an anomaly we want to get rid of it but that means that we also have to get rid of one number on the other end the two so this trimmed mean probably would be a better representative sample of our true average okay 7.2 okay so that is trim mean so what we're going to talk about now is the concept of what we call weighted mean okay and weighted means uh, are just a way of calculating the average of something uh, but assigning different weights or, or different strengths to the numbers. And when I'm calculating your mark in our math class, um, uh, the different categories that um, I'm marking you on have different weights. Uh, for example, uh, we've got three categories for Math 30-3. You're going to be doing quizzes. You're going to be doing unit tests. And you've got a final exam. Well, I assign uh, to each of these uh, three uh, categories different weights, okay, when I'm calculating the mark. For example, your quizzes are worth 35% of your mark, and your tests, your unit tests, they're worth uh, also 35% of your mark, so you can see so far total of 70% of your mark, that leaves the final category, uh, your final exam, worth 30% of your grade. Because when you're calculating weighted means, everything must add up to 100%. Okay, so um, even though you do way more quizzes than unit tests, because you've got eight units, so there's eight tests in here, all eight tests um, have a weight or a percentage score of 35% of your overall mark where you'll be doing 28 little quizzes in all eight units, but they're only worth 35% of your grade. And then you do one test, one final exam, and that has a score of 30%. So you can see by assigning different weights to these categories, it means that each little quiz is worth uh, a much smaller percentage than a unit test. And a unit test is worth a smaller percentage than a final test. So how would we calculate something like this? Well, you know, I've got a computer program that calculates this, but how would this work if we were to do an example of calculating weighted uh, means? Well, let's do a simple example. Supposing I had uh, four tests. And let's say on the first test, we'll give a percentage out of 100, you got 85% on the second test, you got 73%, on the third test you got 91%, and on the fourth test, fourth test you got, oh, let's say 78%. So if all of these tests were worth the same, and we wanted to find an average for these tests, we would just take all these, these uh, results for the test, 
and we wanted to find an average, we would just add them all together, 85 plus 73 plus 91 plus 78, and we would just divide by 4, and we would have an average of 327 divided by 4, which is equal to 81.8%. Okay, so that would be our average if all four of these tests were weighted the same. Okay, uh, let's say they, your, your, your course was based on four marks and they were all equal. Everything has to add up to 100. That means that this would be worth 25%. This grade would be worth 25%, 25%, and 25% for a total of 100, which means that they're all weighted the same. And so we just add them all up, divide by 4, and your mark for the course would be 81.8%. Okay. Now, supposing uh, we, you had the same marks, four different tests, but there was a different weight assigned to each individual mark that you got. Okay, so we're going to do the same example, the same numbers, but we're going to assign weights to each one of the tests. So let's say uh, we had test number one, and it was worth 10% of your grade, and you ended up with an 85%. That's the grade you got there. So let's look at test number two. Test two, that test was worth 15% of your mark for the entire course and you ended up with a 73 percent. Test 3 was worth 40 percent of your grade and you got a 91 percent on that. And the last test, test 4, would have to be worth 35 percent because all of these weights here must add up to 100. Okay, it must add up to 100%. 35 plus 40 plus 15 plus 10 adds up to 45%. And on that last test, you received a 78%. So the question is, how do we calculate your average for this class, this hypothetical class, based on these weights or these values assigned to each individual test? Well, the way we do it is we take our grade. So we could say that the weighted mean is equal to, we would take the mark that we got, 85, and we want to put this in brackets here because we want to add all these things up, and we multiply it by the weight, and the weight is 10%. Well, 10% expressed as a decimal is just 0 0.10, and then we would add that because we're taking the mark for this and we're adding it to we're going to add all four of these marks together to get uh, a total weighted uh, average and I take my second test so this is test one then I'm going to do test two and I'm going to add that and I got 73 percent on that one and I'm going to multiply that by the weighted the, the weight of the category which is 15 percent so that would be 0.15 and I'm going to add that to, now I ran out of room here, so I'm just going to go underneath it. Uh, the next one is test 3. And that is 91%. Multiplied that by the weight is 40, which is 0 0.40, because that's what 40% is, is decimal 4. And I'm going to add that to my last test, test 4 which is 78%, multiplied that by its weight, which is 35%, decimal 35. All right, and I'm just going to add all, do the calculations and add all those up together. All right, so I'll do the first calculation for test one. So 85 times 0.1 is 8.5. Add that to 73 times 0.15, which is 10.95. Add that to test 3, which is 91% times 0.4, which is 36.4. And add that to my last test, test 4, which is 78% times decimal 35, which is equal to 27.3. And I just add all of those numbers up, and I get out of 100% an average of 83.15%. So if I was to take a course, and it had four categories, four tests, 
and each category or test was worth a different amount, then I would have to calculate each individual test separately, multiplying what percentage I got by its weight, and then I would have to add them all up, and that would be my weighted percentage or weighted mean for the class. Okay, so that's all there is for video 3.2. So go ahead and work in your workbook up to page 131. All right, good luck.